Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are looking at components and component libraries. I will show you how to create a simple responsive component that can be used across applications. And this component will be a header component, so the one you see in the top of a mobile app or a web page with a few controls inside. Let's jump right into it. First, let's go to the solution pane. And let's create a new solution here called main component. The reason that I create the component library inside a solution is that it's easier to manage and reuse the components inside the component library across environments. So if you have a big power platform set up with several environments, this is the way to go. If you only have the default environment, then just create it in that one. However, building in solutions is a more scalable and future-proof way. Let's create the component library inside the new solution. Go to the new tab, go to more, choose component library. Inside the component library, you can create one or more components. Inside my library here, I have already one component and then I have the new component as you have. You also have the ability to set up some screens that can help you test out the app. So I've prepared some screens to demonstrate to you the components we make during this video. All right, let's jump back to the components. First, let's try to resize the component just to make it more relatable in terms of a header. So I'll change the height of the component. The next step is to add a container and this type of container makes the header component responsive. So we need to add a container that can hold the controls we need to have inside. So the controls we need to have is for example, navigation item, a text, and then an image of the person that has logged into the app. So let's try to add this container. And it's the horizontal container. So what I did here is that I make the container dependent on the parent. So I would like the width and height to follow the parent size so it can scale or be a response with the app. The next thing we're going to do is to align it inside the container. So we need to change the X and Y property to zero. Great, now it's aligned inside the container. And then on the right side, I will just make a few adjustments. So everything inside this container needs to be centered. Great. The next step is to add the actual controls inside. So we need a navigate icon. So we can use it to navigate back. We need a text label. And then I would like to have a profile picture of the person who have logged in. So let's try to add that. First, let's add the icon. Then let's add the text label. And lastly, the image. The next step is to get everything inside this vertical box. So some of the elements takes up a bit of space. So that has to do with the width and height. So the text label, I would like to be a flexible width and then only needed to be a width of 100. The image height and width should follow the height of the parent, so the container it's inside. So let's try to change that. And then the width can follow the control's own height. Now let's around the image. So give it a border radius. If this border radius of 100 doesn't work, you can go into each uh, radius properties and then just set it to self dot height. I think we should give it a bit of space uh, in terms of the top and bottom, this image icon. So it's comparable to the uh, navigation icon. So I can do that by going to the height property and then just give it a bit of space. And then on the right side of this image, I need to create some space also. Now I would do that with another container because 
using padding can make it more difficult to use the border radius so I can't make it a circle. I'll just solve this with a container. Then I will change the container to only have a width of uh, 10. Move the drop shadow. Great. Now we're getting there. So let's set the actual image to the profile picture of the user. And we can do that by using the user function and then tap into the image. All right. Uh, I would like the text to be centered. That's the text alignment you can use there. Now we need to change the height and width of the icon so it will scale with the header. So again, set the height property and we will again use the parent dot height as a reference. And then the width will be self dot height. To this one, I will add a bit of padding uh, in the top and in the bottom. Beautiful. All right, should we see it in action now? Let's try to add this component to a screen to test it out. So on the first screen, I'll insert my component. So I'll go to insert, find my component and add it. So there are a couple of things we need to do. Uh, first off, we need to set the component width equal to the app's width, so it can be responsive or scale with the app. Do that in the width. Set it to parent dot width, and then, as of now, we can't really test the responsiveness. So if I change to iPhone, it, it keeps the dimensions, so we can't really test the the responsiveness this way. So we need to change a couple of settings. Go to settings, display, turn off lock aspect radius and scale to fit. Let's try it again. Ah, now you can see it's working. Let's add some custom properties so we can actually change the text value and the colors of this component. To add uh, custom properties that can enable us to change the values of this component from the app, you have to select the component. And then on the right side, you can choose new custom property. And you can choose either input or output. Everything we're going to do here is input. So it's things that are coming from the app and the component should receive that as an input and change some values on its own. So the first one is header text. That's a text value. So now we will set this one equal to component one dot header text. A second custom property would probably be the color of the actual text. So let's add that one. Here we'll choose another data type and that should be color. Another custom property we would like to have is to actually change the background fill on the container. So the background of the header. So let's create a custom property for that one. That should also be a color. So let's try to use these two new properties. So color of the text. color. We would probably like to have the same color on our navigate icon. And let's set the background of the header. If you need to change the values of some of the properties, as you can see here, it's black, so it's not very nice to work with. You can click on the custom properties here and then change the values. Great, let's test this out in the screens. So now we can select the component and we can see the actual values here. Tap into the values, call it app name. And then 
we can also go into the color. That's how you can use the custom properties for us to change the values of the components from outside. So let's see it in action here. It's not really making any sense to have a navigate back control on the home screen. So let's try to remove that one if we are on the home screen and then enable it for the other screens. So let's jump back into the components and we can add a custom property. The data type should be a boolean, so true or false. Now we can tap into the property here. Navigation item. Let's hide it on the screen. And of course we need to actually use the custom property on our component. Then let's try to add the component to the other screen here. Let's also just make it responsive here. So here we have the icon, but then on the first screen, we don't have it. As you can see here, we have something with the alignment of the header text we need to fix because it's a flexible width in order for it to be responsive. But when we move the actual navigation item, it fills out the, the rest of the space. So we can fix that with some padding. So let's add that. So the padding on the left. If icon 2 is visible, it's true, it's visible, then the padding should just be 5 as normal. But if it's not visible, then we would need to determine the height of the actual parent element to make the same space that the navigation icon would fill out and then also plus the original five in padding. All right, let's see it in action. As you can see already here, it has centered. And if we play it in this mode, and if we change it, it's wonderful. And let's try to navigate to the second screen. We have the navigate back, but it doesn't have any functionality. So let's try to fix the functionality so we can actually navigate back. So we go back into the component, choose what should have an on the on select property and we just like it to move back. So now it moves back. So there you have it false. A simple way to create a component library and a header component that is sort of responsive. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did you are more than welcome to subscribe for more videos. And if anything wasn't clear or you have any question, please write it in the comments. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay awesome and build awesome apps and dashboard.